My brother, your lack of self-love is leading women to take advantage of you. In fact, every problem that you have, every interpersonal problem that you have is your own lack of self-worth and self-love and being insecure in yourself as a man. How do I know? I fucking lived it for years. And it's one of those things that once you get on the other side of it, you will never go back because it's just not worth it. And you cannot stand having lack of power in your life, lack of agency, lack of being free to be unleashed to be yourself. In fact, you being able to claim this for yourself is what's going to allow you to be comfortable in your own skin and is ironically the most attractive quality you can get as a man. You being secure in yourself is the most attractive quality you can get as a man. Most guys are a lot more attractive than they give themselves credit for, but the problem is they open their mouth and a woman sees insecure and talks her right out of fucking liking him. But you're not going to do that because you're going to watch this video. And you're going to watch all of the video because every point is absolutely crucial. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betrayed Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. Guys come into the Broken to Badass or the Soul Seducer programs and they ask me, Hey Ed, how do I set boundaries? And I'm like, you set boundaries by figuring out what it is that you want. And he's like, well, I'm just trying to stop the manipulation. Like, tell me what things I should tell my wife not to do. And I'm like, what do you not like about her? What is it that she's doing that you don't like? And he's like, well, I'm not sure. Well, you just told me a couple things right now. Like, you don't like her lying to you. Have you had this discussion? Yeah, but it doesn't seem to change anything. Cool. So what do you do about it? Well, I don't know. I keep telling her more and more. I yell at her. We have fights. Yeah, you do nothing. You just do lip service. And this is why your wife doesn't respect you. And this is why she's not attracted to you anymore because you cannot set boundaries because you don't care enough about yourself to say no. And so the first step to loving yourself is deciding that you're going to get intolerant of all the bullshit happening in your life. That you know what? You matter. That you fucking matter in this relationship and you matter in life and you're not going to have people go around ignoring you and acting like you don't matter. And so your first step is declaring that you matter and that what you want matters. And if you don't like it, you don't have to be part of my life. And a lot of men need to hear this because they think, well, I have to have her in my life because I'll never find anybody else. So what? Who cares? Be fucking single. It's better than having somebody degrade you and emasculate you for the rest of your life. It's even better than having a woman in your life doing this to you in front of your children. Imagine what you're doing to them. You're teaching them to be just as weak as you and to not care about you. Or you're teaching your daughters to take advantage of men and that is on you. And you'll wonder why the, everybody's unhappy nowadays because men don't take a stand for themselves. They don't say no. And they just keep tolerating it, tolerating it, tolerating it. And then on the flip side, this this woman saying, I'll be nicer to you if you keep performing for me. And so the guy keeps performing, hoping that she will change. And then he performs and then he gets the bait and switch and nothing happens. And so for you, you have to become intolerant of the bullshit in your life of emasculation, of manipulation, of betrayal, of lies, of gaslighting. 100% intolerant to it. Only then will you have started this game of self-love. And so you don't do it because you feel like a people pleaser. You feel like you have to be nice to everybody. If anybody thinks that you're horrible, then you must actually be a horrible person. So you spend most of your time just trying to make people feel better about you, trying to say the right thing so that they will like you, trying to say the right jokes so that they'll laugh and they'll invite you to things, trying to say the right thing so you don't come off as a jerk. And your entire world is just predicated by this, how do I make other people like me? How do I make other people want to be with me? And the problem is that they'll never like you because you're a carbon copy, you're a cardboard cutout of a person. There's nothing real about you. Everything that you do is just some kind of plastic in order to get people to like you. So all your weird quirks and idiosyncrasies ironically never come out, which are the things that they want to see to begin with. And because you don't stand for anything, they know that they can push you around. This guy's weak. He doesn't stand for anything. He'll say whatever we want. He'll say whatever it needs to get in, to fit in with the rest of us. And women see right through this shit. Other men do too. And this is why you get taken advantage of. Because you don't care enough about yourself in order to stand for who you are. To be unapologetically yourself. If you cannot stand for who you are, then no, you stand for absolutely nothing. And this is how you're inviting people to take advantage of you. Because you're telling the world, you're broadcasting to the world, I don't matter, so just tell me how I have to be. I will do anything for your approval and you become a whore for the approval of others. And men do this all the time. Most people you see on the street, 99% of the people on the street are doing this all the time. They're a whore for validation and attention. If you look on social media, you see it everywhere. 
all kinds of people putting up perfect pictures, trying to get other people to like them. There's no realness there. It's all a land of lies. And so somebody like me who's going to come in there and talk truth to this shit is going to stand out like a sore thumb. And you should be a bastion of truth, your truth. So stop fucking lying and be the guy that you know that you are. Stand unapologetically in yourself or you're just going to have people take advantage of you because you give them. You're giving them the tools to which to do it. You're telling them, hey, look, I need your approval, so I will do anything to get it. I don't care if you insult me. I don't care if you lie to me. I don't care if you make fun of me. I'm just going to do whatever is required to be part of the group or to get your love. Most people don't know how to train people how to treat them. In fact, because they don't know how to do it, they put off this air of, you can treat me however you want, and I'm not going to do anything. But once you start holding boundaries and you start saying to yourself, hey, you know what, I matter, and you start holding people to account about that and just making them, you telling them, hey, look, I'm a good person and you need to treat me with decency, then they start to change. Now, in fact, like a lot of people in your social circle, your family, even your children, your wife, they're not going to like this. They're going to hate it at first and they're going to tell you, you're a jerk. What happened to you? Why are you so different? Like you've changed. And they'll tell you all this stuff because they're trying to leverage your guilt. Oh, I went too far. I'm such a jerk. I shouldn't have said that when that's exactly what you should have said. The thing is they don't like the fact that you're taking back your power. You're, you're not telling them how to live their life, but you're telling them, hey, you're going to treat me this way. You're going to treat me with kindness and respect me. You're not going to lie to me. You're not going to belittle me. You're not going to yell at me. You're not going to manipulate me. And if you don't like it, you don't have to be part of my life. And when you start to do this, this is causes a lot of collision and friction in your world. And, but you will find that if you hold to it, you will learn to teach them how to treat you. People don't treat you how you think they should. They treat you how you allow them to. Again, power is not something that is just bestowed upon you by somebody. And if it is, it's, it's somebody who can also take it away. Power is something that you seize for yourself. And so when you allow people to take advantage of you, just realize you're giving that away. And you intrinsically have that. And so all you have to do is teach them how to treat you. If you don't like the way they're talking to you, show them how you'd like to be talked to. I don't like you talking to me that way. I'd like you to treat me with respect. John isn't my name. My name is Ed, and I'd like you to address me as Ed. If you call me John again, I'm going to leave this place. I don't need to be here in your situation with you belittling me and insulting me by calling me by the wrong name. And there's a massive cost to you not loving yourself. There's a massive cost to you not holding boundaries. There's a massive cost to you not teaching people how to treat you. And this is your entire life is defined by other people and their opinions of you. And in this space, you can't control other people's opinions, so you're always in an anxious place. You're always walking on extras. You're always worried about the next thing that somebody else is going to say. And if you're always worried about the next thing somebody else is going to say, you have no emotional capacity or mental capacity or creative capacity to go create some really cool shit in your life. And in fact, it just robs you of all your happiness. It robs your ability to have fun. You're sitting here at the beach. You're worried about what somebody will look at you if you got your shirt off. You're worried if you're saying the right thing. You're worried to go talk to this woman. You're worried if you're going to say the right thing to your boss. You're too afraid to ask for a raise. You're worried to go even go and get another napkin over at Starbucks because somebody else is standing there, and you would have to tell them, hey, can you please move? And this puts you in this place where you're completely robbed. You're an absolute slave to your entire being as a person. And you expect that you're going to go out there and have good relationships. You can't because you're too afraid to tell people how, how they should treat you. You're too afraid to go out there and do what you want in your life. And you're too afraid to actually seize power for yourself and have actual personal agency. And this is a huge cost. This cost is always pulling on you. You can never get away from it. Usually it's the first thing you think about when you wake up and the last thing before going to bed. And all of your emotional energy is going towards this. And so this cost cannot be overstated. How about you're relaxed and you can just sit at a cafe and not worry about anybody else. You just enjoy yourself and you feel really comfortable in your own skin. How liberating would that be? That guy earned it. That guy decided he's not going to put up with that kind of mental chatter in his head. And he's going to seize the power for himself and become the guy unapologetically no matter what. Because the other cost of it is this. You can go and be what everybody else wants all the time and they could still not like you. And you're not even who you are. So what's the fucking point? At least on this way, you can be unapologetically yourself and you can at least be free of others' opinions. Even if they don't like you, you still got you. And this is what it means to reclaim your power through self-love. It means seizing power for yourself. It means declaring that I am worthy. It means declaring that I matter. And then holding other people to account to adhere to that power. 
And if they don't want to do this, they don't have to. It's their prerogative. They do whatever the fuck they want. They just won't be in my life. And they shouldn't be in yours either. And so in a lot of cases, when this happens, when you start really reclaiming your power of self-love, you start caring about yourself, people are going to have to go. You're going to have to push some people out of your life. You might have to push your parents out. You might have to push your siblings out. You might have to push your spouse out. And you might even have to push some of your adult children out for a while until they learn to treat you with respect. And this isn't easy. Sometimes you lose all your friends. Sometimes you're going to be alone for months. But it's absolutely worth it. Because on the other side of that, people who are kind and people who love themselves in a healthy manner, they're drawn to other people who care about themselves. And in fact, they love the fact that you care about yourself and you care about them and you know, like recognizes like. And so don't be surprised that after a bit of time, you're going to be surrounded by people who actually care about you, who actually honor you, and wouldn't even attempt to push over your boundaries. And so there is a cleaning up process that has to happen. And it can be lonely for a time. But just know that it's only a temporary thing, and you will build better relationships, and you will move forward, and you will have a better woman in your life. And when you do this with people that you care about, it will transform your relationships. The people that you'd have collisions with over and over and over again, all of a sudden they start treating you better. All of a sudden you can have a real conversation with them. All of a sudden they can feel the real you and they actually like you better. And that's ironic because usually you don't do this because you're afraid they'll hate you. You're afraid they'll leave you forever. But once you start standing up for yourself, all of a sudden they start to respect you. And when they respect you, now they actually want to be a part of your life. But nobody wants to be around somebody they don't respect. They look at them with content and they look down their nose at them. And so when you're being that kind of guy the whole time, sitting there trying to make people like you, is actually doing the opposite. You're making them hate you because you're so weak. And when you start standing up for yourself, you start teaching people how to treat you, all of a sudden they're like, hey, you know what? This guy's got some gumption. And that's what people really want from you. My brother, people are always going to take advantage of you let them. They will never just look at you and say, you know what? He's a nice guy. I'm going to treat him right. You know, the golden rule, do unto others as they will do unto you. That's not how the world works, unfortunately. People treat you how you allow them to treat you. And what you tolerate, you encourage. And the biggest one is you can ignore reality, but you can't ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. And so you always find yourself in this place of low self-esteem, people taking advantage of you, people manipulating, lying to you, guilting you, shaming you, gaslighting you. If you don't take the power back and say, you know what, do, you can't be in my life, you're going to act like this. If you don't decide for yourself that you are worthy of love and affection and that you fucking matter, this is going to keep happening. It's going to keep happening over and over and over again. And you're going to keep saying, you're going to keep finding women who cheat on you. You're going to have a hard time finding dates. You're going to have people that take advantage of you. You're going to have business partners who embezzle from you. And this is just what's going to keep happening because you got no backbone. And you can blame everybody else for being jerks. Or you can look at yourself and say, well, why am I letting them into my life? And when they are in my life, why don't I do something about them? And it's going to be scary. It's going to get spicy. But the end result is so worth it. And if you want to start loving yourself, you want to learn how to set boundaries in a way that matters and that they pay attention to, check out this video here. If you want another man to benefit from this video, hit the like button so it'll show up in his feed. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.